Yeah, let's talk about money today. Pay rate for UX designers. Thanks any for recommending this topic. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the different pay rates for different levels as a UX designer, especially in Silicon Valley. As you know, all my internships and full times are here. So that's pretty much the only region I can testify. I'm gonna give you some examples, including my offers and some other data points, where else you can find more UX salary information. Now let's get started and roll the intro. everyone my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley I'm gonna break down this video into two parts part one salary for UX design interns and part two salary for full-time designers I need to split into the two because the pay is quite different for both of the roles and the salary structure is also different I'm gonna preface you by saying that the salary in Silicon Valley is fairly high so prepare for the shock at the same time, the living expenses in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley is considerably high. Also, if you factor in, California has the highest state tax in the United States. So your take home pay might not be that high overall. But anyways, that's just some data points FYI. And now without further ado, let's dive right into it. Part one, design intern salary. First, let's take a look at some laws and it seems like I can talk about it. So let's talk about it. This is a UX intern offer from MuleSoft in 2015, roughly six years ago, counting from 2021. The company got acquired by Salesforce later, which is a similar thing, similar tier enterprise software, which means as an intern, as a designer, you will be working a lot on dashboards, table views, sorting out and organizing data, internal tools, web view, desktop view, data visualization, things like that. I already made a video about that internship, link up here in the description down below. So doing UX work in those area, I had an hourly rate of $43 and $40 a week, four weeks in a month. So roughly it's about 7K per month, which is equivalent to a yearly salary or base pay of 84K. The yearly salary is not that important here. More on that in part two. Next, I'm going to show you a Twitter post, Twitter post, a Twitter post, a tweet from 2016. So this is a compilation of the hottest startups and tech companies back then, back in the days, back in 2016, how much those companies pay their interns. I think that includes both software engineering interns and also design interns. So you can see some popular apps like Snapchat, Pinterest, Twitter, and then you know the bigger ones, Apple, Facebook, Google, as well as like Uber, Airbnb, Square, Dropbox. So now let's take a look at what's relevant to me which will be Pinterest, because I interned at Pinterest in 2016. So 9K per month, that sounds right. And if you do the math, 9K times 12, which is 108K per year. That would be the yearly salary equivalent. I find this offer pretty generous, to be honest. It's not as high as Snapchat or Two Sigma, but I'm happy. I'm uh, not taking it for granted. I'm very thankful, and I did my best during my internship. So those are the two pay rates for my internships. And now let's get to part two full-time ux designer salary i need to break this one down just a little bit more because it involves more than one number as an intern you know you just have one number basically the base pay but sometimes you have relocation but that's pretty much it but for full-time you have more components so here's the basic structure you have a base pay and then you have some stocks the company will give you some stocks to incentivize you to have high performance uh, in the company and then you might have a sign-on bonus when you first join the company as a full-time employee and you might have end of year bonus and then you might have relocation bonus especially if you moving from a different state or different country to this city for this role. So here is my another offer in 2019 from Fitbit. A new grad with a master's degree, I was still considered as a junior designer. If we were to put it on the designer ladder, it would be the entry level, L3, new grad fresh out of school, that is level. If you got out of school with a PhD, your first hire could be L4. This was a product designer role. The base pay was 110K. Some stocks, 1,900 RSU over three years. Back then it was about $3.20 per share. Let's call it 8K in three years. So each year I basically get 2K. Sign on bonus, 10K, which is fairly the standard number. And then the end of year bonus is 5% of the base pay. So if you do the math, it's about 
5.5k. Relocation bonus, some companies do. I was already in the Bay Area, in SF, so I don't have a relocation bonus. So if you sum all those numbers together, you will get an about 127k as the total comp, the total compensation. As a new grad product designer in Silicon Valley, F it bit in 2019. Just a little bit more information on the role. I was a product designer on the firmware team. I would have been designing the operating system for their watch product. So the, the Blaze, the Versa, uh, along those lines. So firmware sits between hardware and software and you know, Fitbit, watch company, fitness company, they have both components. But still, because of the hardware side, the compensation tend to be lower. That's just the pattern or my observation. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that was a bad offer. It was a great offer for me. Especially, you know, my background was in industrial design, doing physical design, physical product. So being in this role, I can get to work on both the hardware and software side, both components. It was great. So those are my three offers, three data points. And now I'm going to show you where else you can dig into more UX designer salary and how accurate they are. The sites I'm about to show you are mainly focusing on full-time UX designer salary. There are actually not that many UX intern data out there in general. So if you're trying to find those but couldn't find any, that's probably why. Back to the subject. First one, Glassdoor. You might be familiar with this one. So if you look at Fitbit, product designer, fairly the same role, right? Uh, so he says about 127K to 152K per year. So mine was 127, low end, probably entry level, you know, so this is the range between from low end to high end, maybe like L4, L5. So Glassdoor is fairly accurate in this. And you can also browse different roles like industrial designer, senior visual designer, visual designer, design manager, to just get some sense what Fitbit might be offering to designers. Next one, level FYI. So Glassdoor is more tacky and busy, so I prefer to look at level FYI. Everything is more visual. The downside of this is it doesn't have as much as Glassdoor. For instance, if you go to try to search for Fitbit, it only has software engineer salary. It doesn't have any designer data. But you can still use this to try to get a sense of what it looks like for other offers from other popular companies like Pinterest, for example, right? So you see there's a base salary, stocks, bonus, and as you see L4, 221K. Well, it's a high salary, what does that mean? What does that translate? It means that they do value designers more. So their total compensation is definitely higher, higher than let's say Fitbit in my case. Well, to be fair, Pinterest was co-founded by a designer. So that kind of sets the culture, right? Overall, this number makes total sense to me. I had a great time working there too. Plus, if a design intern at Pinterest is 108K salary, an L4 designer at Pinterest has 180K base, not too surprising to me. Or you can look at Google, for example. Uh, this one has more data, so it has a way nicer breakdown of different levels and conversation. So you can list it L3, 4, 5, 6, 121K base for entry, 154 for L4, 174 for L5, so on and so forth. My the Fitbit offer base is 110k. 121k for Google seems pretty accurate to me as you know they search slash ads company tends to pay a bit more. With the trajectory chart you can really see how salary scales up across level from L3, 4, 5 and 6. Another one will be blind anonymous professional network. Sounds like a secret society, huh? It kind of is. So this is where employees will anonymously secretly ask questions, share their view on their company, on other companies and share some offer details. Just FYI, when you go to Blind, you might need to sign up for an account. It's totally free, it costs you nothing. Once you sign in, you can just you can go back to the link. I will have it in the description down below. You can look at this example. So this person has eight years of experience. He's in SF Bay Area. So if he worked for Facebook as a contractor, uh, L4, so this is for L4, I'm guessing. So it will be $97 per hour. And if it's Wish, it will be 130 slash 150K. Flexport, Broadcom, Amazon, 100 to 180K. RSU, RSU means restricted stocks units. So basically how much stocks you will get. If you just even take a glance at them, you will see they have fairly the same structure. Base pay, stocks, and bonus. There may be some other things too. So the salary is only one part of this site. So once you have an account, you can browse around and you can really easily find yourself drowning in this sea of dollar signs and insider questions, not just about salary, but for example, company culture, how much power designers will have in different companies, how different companies value designers differently. So here's a summary slide of UX intern salary and UX full-time salary in a Bay Area. Take a screenshot if you like, just as a reference, you don't have to get too attached to this as these data also only present this particular moment in time. It might get high over time, but at least you have some idea. So what do you guys think? Do you have a better sense of how different 
designer level and company will affect the level of pay you get? Does any number surprise you? Do you think designers are worth more than those numbers? Let me know your thoughts on in the comment section down below. I'm also going to make another video on pay rate negotiation pretty soon. If you have other questions on UX designer pay you want me to address or cover, let me know in the comment too. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX career tips or design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!